Using a Latin expression would make this sound very sleek. Sadly, I'm not proficient in Latin, so I would say it in plain English. Everything with a beginning must come to an end. Humans, civilization, the world, we will all end someday. Okay, let's get into this properly. The Roman Empire, China's Qing Dynasty, the Maya, ancient Egypt and so on are examples of civilization that shone very brightly in their time. Large expanse of land, unbelievable workforce, monumental architecture, unique art signs, the features of these eras are just too amazing to picture. However, in every case, their glory days were followed by a collapse, an inevitable trajectory that leaves us with just artifacts and mystery discoveries proving these eras truly existed. Literally all past civilizations have suffered this fate. While few of them, like the Chinese in Rome, recovered or transformed, other collapses were permanent, left abandoned as a site for future tourists. Characterized by rapid and enduring loss of population, socio-economic complexity, crumbling public services, government losing control of its monopoly of violence, and so much more. These collapses definitely weren't sudden, but a slow degeneration and compounding of problems that weren't addressed soon enough. Now, you know what is more? It looks like Western civilization is experiencing this fate right now. The signs are obvious. Placing the pre-collapse moments of the Roman Empire side by side with where we are now, we would find multiple similarities ranging from political polarization to rising economic inequality, ecological disasters, violent conflicts. You can add to this list if you want, and trust me, you won't be wrong. To put this simply, many scholars see what is happening as a global polycrisis posing a severe and existential threat to contemporary societies. But how do we place this? If you ask me, I honestly don't know, thanks to the high subjectivity of the likelihood of a society collapsing. However, let me draw your attention to a remarkable and relatively new study by Gaia Harrington, a director of KPMG, one of the big four accounting firms. In her study, Harrington discovered that a famous and half a century old warning about the risks of industrial civilization collapsing appears more accurate now than ever based on new empirical data. Let me break that down for you. The 2020 pandemic was at best damning, especially economically, for almost all, if not all, economies in the world. However, as we now anticipate a full rebound in global economic growth after such a devastating impact, Harrington's research raises urgent questions and draws fresh attention to MIT's warnings. The controversial MIT analysis generated immense debates and was ridiculed by pundits who misrepresented and misinterpreted the findings and methods when it was first published. But now, Harrington has vindicated this study, and with her analysis, if you ask me, I'm afraid our society might truly be following the footsteps of previous civilizations collapse if we don't take timely remedial actions. Let's narrow this even further. In 1972, a group of MIT scientists used a computer model to examine the future of humanity, and they identified that Western civilization was on track to collapse sometime around the middle of the 21st century due to humans' over-exploitation of planetary resources. Actually, the year 2040, to be precise. Titled The Limits to Growth, the report used a system dynamics model called World 3 to look at the complex interactions between humans, fertility rate, pollution, including carbon emissions, industrial output, food production, and natural resources. These scientists argued that our society would collapse if the government continued to pursue continuous economic growth without minding what it takes to achieve it. Out of 12 possible scenarios forecasted for the future in limits to growth, almost all predicted a point where natural resources would become exceedingly scarce, that personal welfare would nosedive, and further economic growth would become impossible. The sobering report explores three critical models. The business as usual model, the comprehensive technology model, and the stabilized world model. However, more focus was on the business as usual model, as that was the scenario materializing at the time. Business as usual predicted the global economic growth would peak around the 2040s and take a sharp downturn alongside food availability, natural resources, and global population, describing it as a societal turning point that would see standards of living drop worldwide for decades. But let's leave the 1970s for a second and focus on where we are at the moment. What is the outlook for the society now? Well, if you ask me, as I mentioned earlier, this is very subjective. 
But to get a clearer standpoint, let's focus more on the four main issues that could be responsible for such a collapse. Number one, political issues. Number two, social and cultural issues. Number three, environmental issues. And number four, economic issues. Whether societies are ruled by good governments or ruthless dictators, they fall apart in time, although with different degrees of severity. See, history always tells us something, and while that doesn't mean it would repeat exactly, there is an obvious pattern. So that means there are lessons in these situations. Political inequality, centralization of power and oligarchy can be central drivers of societal collapse. To put this simply, they handicap the society's ability to respond to social and economic problems, leading to an eventual collapse. A careful examination of previous societies reveals that this happens in cycles, and to be honest, it seems we're already in one of those cycles. Politics is becoming increasingly corrupt, leaving life to treat us, the less privileged, very unjustly. The gap between the haves and the have-nots is getting wider as a cabal of insiders continues to garner wealth and power at the expense of the citizens. Now, the majority lives for bread and circuses, worshipping celebrities and throwing off moral and social restraints to the wind. We are at the highest peak of moral decadence the world has ever seen. And guess what? Things aren't looking to get better. A trip down memory lane would remind us of the decline of Baghdad in 1861 CE. The extraordinary influence of celebrity culture over young people exceeded tolerable limits, with much obscene sexual language becoming the order of the day. It almost became a lingua franca. <laughs> Thinking about it now and reflecting on our current realities, I can't help but draw a connecting line. Beyond the roof-breaking sexual atmosphere, the corruption of officials, politicians acquiring unthinkable wealth through public office, prevalent materialism, and so many more, we are the proof that we are currently facing a social and cultural breakdown. Undoubtedly, we humans are the most invasive species ever known, and continuing this invasiveness at the current pace of anything slightly higher can result in a collapse. Societal collapse typically occurs when such a society overshoots the carrying capacity of the environment. This points us to excessive deforestation, soil degradation, water pollution, you can continue with the list if you want, I'm sure you won't be wrong. Climactic change, basically. And once we lose the current climatic stability, the results can be disastrous. Perfect examples of the collapse of the Tiwanuku civilization, the Mayan, the Anasazi, and even the Roman Empire. All of these have coincided with abrupt climatic change, usually droughts leading to crop failure, starvation, desertification, and so on. Almost two-thirds of chief economists believe the possibility of a global recession in 2024. For more than 12 months, economists, financial professionals, and even politicians have semantically debated whether the United States economy, the strongest in the world, is headed for a recession or not. Believe me, if the signs aren't apparent, none of these debates or conversations would be held. The former president of the World Bank, David Melpass, recently mentioned that global growth is slowing sharply, with even further slowing likely, forcing more countries to fall into recession. My deepest concern is that all indications show that these trends will persist, which would have long-lasting consequences, maybe similar to the 2008 financial crisis. So the big question is, is the economic boom dance over, and is our society headed for a total collapse? Well, let's return to the 1970 MIT study to put this into perspective. Harrington discovered that the current state of the world, measured through the various variables set out in the MIT study, aligned closely with two of the models proposed in 1972. The business as usual and comprehensive technology models, both of which suggest that natural resources would run out if we continue at this pace. And in other words, a sudden collapse of industrial society. So yeah, Beyond reasonable doubt, MIT's 1970 report, alongside the confirmation by director Gaia Harrington, is all that we need to know that the world is currently not following a stable path and a collapse may be imminent soon. I mean, what else can I, a YouTuber, possibly have against these confirmations? But there is good news. It's not too late to avoid the possibilities from both the business as usual and comprehensive technology scenarios and put society back on track for a better alternative model the stabilized world scenario. This model begins just as the business as usual and comprehensive technology models do with the population, economic growth and pollution increasing while natural resources suffer for it. 
However, the difference comes when humans decide to deliberately limit economic growth as much as possible before a lack of resources forces them to do so, which is usually catastrophic. So typically, what we need is a shift in values, and when it occurs, global population and industrial growth begin to level out. Food availability continues to rise to meet demand, pollution declines, and the depletion of natural resources also begins to level out, ultimately avoiding societal collapse altogether. Now, this may sound like a fantasy, especially concerning pollution, but following the provisions of both MIT study in 1970 and Harrington's analysis, a deliberate change in course is still possible. The rapid development and deployment of vaccines during the coronavirus pandemic perfectly demonstrates our capability to respond constructively and rapidly to global challenges if we wanted to. So, what we really need is a willing mindset and a determined approach to curb environmental crises and save our society from collapsing. Of course, the necessary changes will be challenging, as they don't only concern the government, but also businesses. Nonetheless, an inclusive and sustainable future is still possible. Let me leave you with Harrington's concluding statement in her study. It's not yet too late for humankind to purposefully change course to significantly alter the trajectory of the future. Our survival will depend on the speed at which people can adapt and somehow make necessity the driving force of invention. In other words, if it isn't necessary, it's pointless to waste natural resources for it. Thank you for joining us. Now go ahead and explore our other videos on the Declassified channel. Until next time, stay curious, and continue digging for the truth. Catch ya.